Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us in worship on Sunday morning, but every waking and sleeping moment, every hour of alertness or dullness, in every activity, with every word, with every thought, you are with us, and we are deeply grateful for your holy presence in our daily lives. Thank you, Lord, for coming to earth just for us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Well, the left side's been recruiting. What's happened to the right side? <laughs> We're glad to see all of you. Good to see you. How about the weather? Nothing we can do about it, so we might as well enjoy it. Amen? Yeah, that's good. We're glad to see you. It's good to welcome Pat Schoner back. Pat, uh, Pat has her alternate home in Michigan. And her real home is here in Victoria. And, and I, I, oh, I hope your folks in Michigan are not listening this morning. <laughs> oh, maybe you want to call their attention to it. But we're glad to have you back, Pat. Good to see you. There are several announcements to make. Um, uh, I first want to say to Kelly, or for, on Kelly's behalf, all of the shoe boxes were filled, signed, sealed, and delivered and paid for. They're all gone. 50 boxes from this congregation. Can we work for 75 next year? Just having a go, you know, we don't want to do too, make it so unrealistic, but you know, another 25 boxes is not hard to do. So we'll, we'll just look at doing that. We're thank you. Kelly has, has spearheaded this project for several years and we're grateful for her leadership in this. It's, it's been a, a real blessing and you are a real blessing to others. Just as an example, uh, the, the tie I'm wearing this morning is, is what's called a Save the Children tie. It was designed by Julie who was, uh, I think she was 12 years old at the time. Uh, yes, she was 12 years old. And all the proceeds from this time, this has been many years back, uh, went to the Save the Children Fund. Children, the Bible tells us to bring up our children in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord over in Ephesians. And that's what we're trying to do with these projects. And I think, I think Kelly's got some other things in mind for us too. So we'll just keep, keep uh, attentive. The poinsettias, it's time for the year. If you'll notice, the poinsettia tree is devoid of poinsettias at the moment. The poinsettias will be delivered on December 6th. And you can sign up for them out in the, out in the foyer. Uh, just buy one, two, three, four, ten, however many you want in honor of or in memory of or just because. Uh, and, and then when, when they come, we'll put them on the poinsettia tree. Jerry Whitworth made the tree possible for us. I, I believe last year was the first year we'd use that, wasn't it, Jerry? Year before. Well, yes, you're right. I keep thinking in terms of temporal time and it's been two years since we were had, had something like this for Christmas, but we appreciate that. But the poinsettias are, are to be ordered and the sign-up sheets are out there. Keep your prayer request cards handy. They're in the back of the attendance registration pad. If you have a prayer request, we'd ask that you write it down on that prayer request card. And at that time, we'll have an usher come and pick it up from you and share those with you. There will be a council meeting on December 6th at uh, 6 p.m. We do have some business we have to take care of. The virtual charge conference is to be held on December 12th. So uh, we have some business that we have to take care of it preceding that meeting. So all of our board members, council members need to be aware of that. Anything else for that, Kathy? Yeah, it, it's not going to be a long meeting, uh, but, but just some things we have to do before uh, our, church, our charge conference. Any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Then if you would get your hymnal and turn to hymn number 211. This, as I said, is, oh, oh, wait, wait, there, there's one more. I forgot about this and I had it on my list. VCAM, Victoria Christian Assistance Ministry, is asking us, the churches of the, of the community, to gather items for the homeless. Uh, in cold months, as you can imagine, are the most difficult for homeless people. And they're asking us to donate beanies or stocking caps, 
gloves, hoodies, jackets, socks, towels, and underwear. How would you like to be out on the street, regardless of why you're there? How would you like to sleep out tonight in a, under a bridge or lying on the sidewalk in front of a business or hunkered down in the weeds somewhere? How many of you would like to have that experience? So a couple of three weeks ago, they did have a sleep out for our community. I was not aware of it or I would have told you about it. Where several people slept out with the homeless as the homeless sleep. Uh, they need these kinds of things. And, and you may be thinking, you know, well, you know, all they're going to do is go spend it on this, that or another thing. Or they're there because they want to be. I mean, we can come up with all kinds of flimsy excuses. You remember that message about three weeks ago? Flimsy excuses. We can come up with all kinds of excuses why we don't want to give because. But they're human beings created by and loved by the same God who created you and loved you, loves you. So. Look for beanies and towels and washcloths. Well, no washcloths. Um, towels. What did I, well, all did I say? Gloves, beanies, hoodies, sack, ja jackets, socks, towels, and underwear. I'll leave this out on the foyer so you can find it. Would you get your hymnal? 211. Just let it ring. Let them hear it outside and let it be all over your being. The smile, the inward sense of God's presence and the desire to go and serve him. Rejoice. Here we go. And 
would you remain standing and join with us as we share the words, and the thoughts, the ideals, and the traditions of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Would you get the little black hymnal that you were handed? We will be singing each verse on the Sunday of Advent of that the verse speaks today, we will sing only the first. Next Sunday, we'll sing the first and second and so forth. And so we will just remain seated, but please, um, please do share that song. join our hearts and minds together as we spend some time just listening for God's voice.
Heavenly Father, we have come together this morning to praise you, to give you thanks, to honor your holy presence. We are deeply grateful, O oh God, for the many times that you've blessed our lives in so many different ways. We come because we love you and desire with our whole heart to serve you. Father, we've come too to lift up friends and neighbors, family members and acquaintances and even total strangers and even our enemies in prayer. We ask, O oh God, that these whom we have called before your throne of grace this morning may receive the gift of your grace of healing, healing of spirit, of soul, and of body. Father, we just ask that you spread your arms over these, our friends and, and family members. We also pray, Father, that enemies may be enemies no more. That your peace will inhabit the hearts and minds of folks who are estranged with one another. Who maybe even find themselves an enemies of each other. We ask your blessing for all who need the touch of your hand. We give you thanks, O oh God, once again, for your love, your mercy, your grace extend to us, to us in Jesus Christ. For it's in his name that we offer these prayers and many more besides, even as we pray that prayer that he has taught us as disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn before the word is What Child Is This? Number 219. Let's stand together as we sing this great hymn of Christmas.
we've just come through a season of thanksgiving, giving thanks. And last Sunday, I spoke just a few words about remembering to give thanks. And then I got to thinking, what are we giving thanks for? And we can name hundreds of things that we're giving thanks for. I'd like to spend the next four Sundays reminding us of some of the things we may not ordinarily think about being gifts from God. So I would like to start this morning by giving thanks to God for the body. You thankful for your body? Let me share with you my favorite psalm, from my favorite psalm, Psalm 139, beginning in verse 15, 14. The psalmist says, I will give thanks to thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are thy works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame, actually that word frame means skeletal system. That's, that's the literal definition of that. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Thine eyes have seen my unformed substance. That is crazy. Unformed substance. Substance is not unformed. Substance has substance. It's real. You can touch it. You can feel it. But God saw our unformed substance. And in thy book they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When you stop to think about the complexities and the intricacies of the human body, it is absolutely astounding. And I, I do not present myself in any way, shape, or form as any kind of even radically knowledgeable about all of that. But there are some things I have found out. If you were to string the bloodways in your body all together in one long line, how long would that be? Anybody know? In a child, you're not going to believe this. In a child, it's 60,000 miles. In an adult, it's up to 100,000 miles. It may depend on who you read, but, the, but I read several resources and that's what they were saying. 60 to 100,000 miles of bloodways in our human body. Think about the human eye for a moment. We, we, we're not going to go into the biology of the human eye, but you know, you know how many muscles are in the human eye? Make it uh, up and go up and down, uh, eyeball and, and back, side to side and round and round. Six. It only takes six muscles to move the eyeball in those directions and one muscle to hold the eyelid intact. The heart, if we take the heart beating at a rate of 72 times a minute, that's about, about 135,000 beats in a day's time. Over a life of 70 years, it's over 2 billion times. The most efficient, the most effective pump in the world. Truly, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And the psalmist says, my soul knows it very well that your works are wonderful. Have you stopped to give God thanks for your body and how it functions and how it operates? Okay. Not everybody function, every, not every body functions in the same way. Things happen to us. They happen to us physically. They happen to us emotionally. They even happen to us spiritually. And our bodies, our bodies are not the same. We just have to recognize that, realize that, and celebrate that. For we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. Does that, does that get you excited? Does that, does that kind of grab you, the, the, the way God put us together? I hope it does. But there is another body that I really want to talk to you about. 
I want you to celebrate your human body. I really do. It's, it's a great gift from God. But I also want you to realize and recognize the body of Christ on earth. Do you give thanks for any other part of the body besides John Wesley United Methodist Church? Do you pray for any other part of the body besides John Wesley United Methodist Church? And I, I pray that you don't have to answer that. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just asking us, do we consider the body? When we celebrate Holy Communion, one of the things that we're asked to do is to consider the body. Not only the body of Jesus Christ, but the body of Christ here on earth. That's the bread that is broken so we can be the body of Christ. Over in Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 24, we find these words. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. This is Paul speaking. And in my flesh, I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church, in parentheses, it's there, in filling up that which is lacking in Christ's afflictions. We're not going to talk about that this morning, but that in itself is an amazing passage. He goes on to say, of this church, of this body, I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. The Bible teaches us God's word teaches us that we are part of a larger body. We call it the body of Christ. So as part of the body of Christ, what are some things we can expect? Not only from John Wesley United Methodist Church, but from any other Christ-centered, Bible-believing part of the body of Christ. We can expect to be encouraged. We can expect to be prayed for. We can expect to be challenged. We can expect to be lifted up when we are down. The, 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 the gifts of the body of Christ go on and on and on. During the pandemic, it's my opinion, okay? I've always told you, I will tell you when something I tell you is merely my opinion. And this is my opinion. It's my opinion that many in the body of Christ have lost sight of what the body of Christ is and what the body of Christ is all about. And to share with you, uh, Carrie Rosenquist sent me, or, or gave me uh, a, a little saying that she saw on Facebook. Was that just this morning, Carrie, that you saw this? Was it just this morning that you saw this? Okay. She shared this with me. I don't know who wrote it. It was on her Facebook page. And some of you may have already seen this. As church attendance numbers fade across the nation and online services become very convenient, it's important to remember why church attendance for you and your family matters so much. You can't serve from your sofa. You can't have community of faith on your sofa. You can't experience the, the power of a room full of believers worshiping together on your sofa. Christians aren't consumers. We are contributors. We don't watch. We engage. We give. We sacrifice. We encourage. We pray by laying hands on the hurting. We do life together. The church needs you and you need the church. Now, I don't know who wrote that or what, their, what, what motivated them to do that, but I believe that's true. The body of Christ is our, is our foundation for living life on an everyday basis. We need to be able to know that we can turn to the members of the body of Christ anywhere at any time and know that we'll be received and encouraged and challenged. Know that we will be accepted and refreshed by the fellowship. Folks, I believe we're standing on, on, on the doorstep, on the threshold of changes in the church of Jesus Christ that we never could have imagined. I don't know what all those changes would entail, but, but 
if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we ought to be able to begin to discern some of what's going on regarding the church of Jesus Christ, not only in this nation, but in the world. And if ever there was a time when the church needed its people to gather together, to celebrate the power of Christ, to celebrate the love of God, to celebrate the presence of God. This, this season, I, I, I love the word, the name Emmanuel so much because it reaffirms the fact that God is with us. God walks with us. We do not walk alone. And see, in the body of Christ, I don't have to rely on myself alone. Maybe there are times when I would do that, but I can rely on you. You can rely on me. You can rely on the people around you. That's the nature of the body of Christ. If you were to do a word study of the church in the New Testament, you would be astounded at the things the church offers and would be reminded once again to give thanks to God for the body of Christ. Every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, that's a, that's a, that's a time for giving thanks to God for the body of Christ. You and I, like it or not, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. If you like me, that's great. If you don't like me, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's just, just the way it goes. We're members of the same family. We are family members. It's not always easy living with you. And as Elizabeth will tell you, it's not always easy living with me. But we are living together. My encouragement this morning is for us to recognize the, the, the value of the body of Christ and our being a part of that. It is my desire to see the church begin to act like the church. And I'm not talking about one congregation or one denomination. I'm talking about the church. The church, we are, li church we are living in a day when we must rise up, when we must present Jesus Christ in winsome kinds of ways to our communities, to our nation, to our world. We are the body of Christ. I want to encourage you to look up the word church in the New Testament and even body, body of Christ. Uh, body of Christ is not mentioned too many times, but he talks of, the, the New Testament talks a lot about the body and the being the body of Christ. Do that study and see what you and I are a part of. We're part of something bigger than we are. Even as our physical bodies have been fearfully and wonderfully made, Jesus told his disciples when he said, he said, uh, I asked the disciples, who do, who do people say that I am? And Jesus, and they told him, she said, well, some say Elijah, some say a prophet, some say John the Baptist, you know, some say different things. And then Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Peter rises up and says, you are the Christ, the, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven and upon the rock of this confession, I will build what? What? My church. If we will ever get past the idea of, of believing that this is my church, this is our church, and realize that it is not yours or mine in that sense, it is formed, it is ordained, it is empowered, it is challenged, it is called by Jesus the Christ to be the church in the world. Why do you think Jesus is building the church, began the building and, and is continuing today? Because we have a message, a message. Wait, Rose was just waving, that's okay. Jesus has a message for us to get out into the world. That's what the church is about, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's your task. And I, I leave it at that. It's my task too. But, but so often we expect the pastor, the preacher, the, the paid person 
to do all of that work. It's not my job. That's your job. My job is to <laughs> encourage you. <laughs> and you can look at that in any kind of way you want. To be and challenge you to be the church. You can be the church out there. It's not hard. And I'm gonna, after the first of the year, uh, we're going to start a one night a month, Sunday evening, get together for prayer time. I'll, be a, I'll bring a short teaching. And one of the short teachings I want to bring is how to share our faith. How do I do that? Do I go around with my Bible up in my hand? Well, anyway, we're going to get into some of that. It's, it's, it's a very easy thing, really, as a matter of fact. We're the church. So let's go out there and be the church. Amen. Anybody got anything to say? Yes, Carol. The question is, how did, they, how did they come up with the word church? Actually, the word church in the New Testament is a word called ecclesia, which technically means assembly. Now, I, have to, I have to tell you, um, church comes, the, the word church comes from the German kirche, which means church. Now, how they, I'm, I'm, I have to plead ignorance on how that word church came up. But in the New Testament, the word that is translated church is that word ecclesia, which means assembly. And in the, in the original Greek uh, culture, it was the assembly of the elders, uh, those who made decisions, those who passed judgments. So that's, uh, that's a thumbnail. I'll have to do a little more work on the word church because it escapes my memory about that. I just know what I've told you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You got anything to say, to share, to ask, to observe, to give for the body information? I'll be bashful. It's a good time to do that. Yes, Pat. Okay, that's, that's a good word. Pat says when she went to church camp as a teen, the counselors would tell them to think of their body as the church. And, and what Paul says in 1 Corinthians is that, uh, he, in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, do you not know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who has been given to you? And so glorify, therefore glorify Christ in your body. So, residing within us who call ourselves Christians, who have accepted, recognized, affirmed, and accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, not only personally, but for the world as well. Residing in us is the very spirit of the living God. That's part of how we share our faith, by the, by the energizing, by the empowering, by the inspiration, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, it's a good word. And, and he also says, individually, we are all members of the same body and members of one another. Boy, the relationship that the Bible outlines for us as the church is incredible. If we would just open ourselves to it. Anyone else? Yes, Bob. Yesterday, Patsy was married 63 years. Hmm. I wonder how many Bob's been married. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. God bless you. 63 years. That's wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get our hymnals and share our closing hymn, number 217. And as we stand and sing the hymns of the church, let us remember who God has called us to be. And all of these hymns throughout the rest of the season, throughout the rest of the year, throughout the next year, speak of who we are in Christ Jesus.
life that he's given you in your body and know that he's called you as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. May your week go well and encouraged. God bless you.